right, if you have your Bibles, let's go ahead, open those up today. We are in the book of Isaiah, the book of Isaiah, and uh, we're in a devotional series that I am personally enjoying. Uh, we've called it Praying for a Rhema Word from God. You know, we need to hear from the Lord. We need to hear his voice. We need to hear him speak to us. We need to hear the Lord, you know, whisper to our, our hearts and into our ears uh, words from him to remind us uh, that we are, are not serving a God who is dead. Remember Jesus told the Pharisees, he says, I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. What was he telling them? He was saying, listen, you think Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob are dead. They're alive. They're in heaven. I fellowship with them. They're alive, and I'm still alive. Jesus rose from the dead, and he wants to speak to us. And I believe I have a rhema word for you today uh, from the Lord, something God is speaking to my heart here in Isaiah 61. I'll tell you, for the last probably year, the Lord has been bringing me to Isaiah 61 again and again about how the spirit of the Lord God is upon us. Remember Jesus, when he went to the, the synagogue, he, he, read, he read this as a, as a visiting rabbi. Uh, the synagogue would allow a portion of time during that synagogue service for visiting rabbis to share the word with the congregation. And here in Isaiah 61, Jesus would say this to them, signifying that he was the, the Messiah, the Mashiach. He says, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me to proclaim liberty to the captives, to proclaim the opening of the prison doors to those who are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. But what I want to share with you is I believe the Spirit of God is upon us for a specific purpose. And I want you to drop down to verse 4. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon us. The Spirit of the Lord God was upon Jesus for a purpose. And what is that purpose? Well, this is one of the main purposes I believe God has for us individually, for Calvary Chapel Grace Fellowship independently, that God has this calling upon us as a congregation, as the Spirit of the Lord is upon us, Isaiah 61, verse 4, and they shall, note this, rebuild the old ruins. You know, the Lord wants to rebuild what Satan has ruined. I believe it. I, I know it. The Lord wants to rebuild. He wants to breathe fresh life. You know, it's almost like a campfire. As it starts to go out, you can either let it die or you can feed that fire again. How do you feed it? Well, with the wood. And what is the wood? The wood is the word of God. And, and you don't just feed it with wood. You also have to feed it with what? With wind. With wind. You blow upon it. And as you feed it with the wood and you blow upon it, what happens? That fire begins to roar once again. I believe God wants to rebuild the old ruins with the wood of his word and the wind of his Holy Spirit. They shall raise up the former desolations. God wants to do a new work. He wants to raise up the former desolations that, that, that God alone can bring back to life. And they shall repair, the Bible says, the ruined cities. You know, in our nation, specifically here in the United States, the cities are ruined. You know, crime rates are skyrocketing. People need Jesus. They need to hear about the goodness of God, the, the, the plan of salvation. They need to know that their sins have been paid for. They need to be reminded that God created the heavens and the earth, that they are not, they are not an accident. They are not the, uh, the repercussion of billions of years of star butt dust exploding and, and goo and then became you, right? They need to hear this. And they shall repair the ruined cities, the desolations of many generations. God will restore it. He will repair the ruined cities. He will do a new work in these desolated generations. You know, even if your, your father was like that and your grandfather and your great-grandfather and these ruined generations, Jesus wants to do this new work. You're not under a curse. Receive Jesus, and now you're under the blessing of the Lord. He's got a plan for you to prosper you, not to harm you, to give you a future and a hope. And God's Spirit is upon us to be used of him to repair this ruin, 
to watch God work. And I pray that you receive that word from the Lord today. Father, anoint your people with the power of your Holy Spirit today. In Jesus' name, amen.